Two people from Spokane are facing charges in a murder for hire plot. They were teens at the time, and investigators say they were paid to kill a woman in Spokane County, but they killed the wrong person. We're seeing a back edge to the rain here in the Spokane area, so I'm tracking a drier day tomorrow, but more rain is on tap. I'll tell you when it arrives next. New video captures the exact moment a power pole fell on a couple's SUV south of Seattle. They both survived, but we're still trying to figure out what caused all those power poles to come crashing down. Hi everyone, it's good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. Welcome everyone, I'm Mark Hanrahan. Two people from Spokane are being investigated for their involvement in a murder for hire that happened more than a year ago over on the west side. The Snohomish County Sheriff's Office says an ex-husband hired the then teenagers to kill his wife. But investigators say they mistakenly murdered that woman's sister. Graham 2's Amanda Rowley has been reading through court documents. She brings us the latest tonight. In September 2017, Snohomish County Sheriff's deputies responded to a home in Everett where this woman, 24 year old Alicia Canales McGuire, was shot and killed. She was at the home babysitting for her sister Amanda, who investigators say was the intended victim. Three murder for hire suspects have now been arrested this week. Amanda's ex husband, Kevin Lewis, and now 20 year old Jaredon Phelps and his now 17 year old ex girlfriend. Because she is a minor, the sheriff Sheriff's office is not releasing her name, but both teens were living in Spokane at the time of the murder. Jaredon was 18 and the girl was 16. According to documents from Snohomish County Sheriff's Office, Kevin Lewis and his ex-wife Amanda had a difficult breakup and rocky relationship. After Amanda's sister was murdered, Lewis told investigators he was home all night. The case was at a standstill until a tip came in almost a year later from a caller in Spokane. She told investigators she was at a party and overheard an acquaintance admitting to being hired to kill someone in Snohomish County and that a man initially tried to hire her then-boyfriend, Jared on Phelps. Investigators eventually confirmed Phelps is the ex-husband's cousin. With search warrants, investigators gained access to the teen's phone records. They found that both of the suspect's phones were in the same location at the same time, traveling to western Washington. They say social media also provided a trail of evidence, specifically a picture of Phelps posting $100 bills fanned out a few hours after the murder. According to investigators, the ex-husband hired the teens to drive to Everett to kill his wife, Amanda. Court documents state they negotiated the price from Lewis's first offer of $1,500 to the final agreement of $2,400. Lewis is currently in prison for assaulting his wife in 2016. The two teens are also in custody in connection with the murder for hire investigation. Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. All right, to weather now. The rain and wet weather continues to hang around tonight. We likely won't see much sun for the next few days. We'll send things over to Tom Sherry, who is solar powered. So, Tom, how are you doing over there? <laughs> it was a tough day today, but I do think tomorrow morning we will see some sunshine. So, it'll get a little bit better then. But we've got a lot of rain on tap this weekend. Let's talk about the heavy rain that we've seen already. And, of course, that's melting a lot of the snow in the mountains, causing the rivers to rise. So, a flood warning is in effect for the Palouse River between Potlatch and Palouse. Washington, those areas shaded in red right there, and uh, some of the roadways are actually covered in water. So uh, again, this will the uh, river is expected to uh, crest uh, sometime tomorrow night. And that will be above flood stage, so watch out for that. The heaviest rain, by the way, is south of us in Whitman County, where we're seeing the flooding along that uh, Palouse River. We've got a back edge of the uh, precipitation here in Spokane. It's pretty much from I-90 to the south right now, but those darker shades of green and yellows indicate that heavier rainfall just southeast of the Rosalia area. Over the next 12 hours, we'll see decreasing showers should dry out overnight. And tomorrow morning, again, we'll look for sunny skies on your Wednesday morning and then becoming... Uh, partly cloudy in the afternoon with a daytime high of 56, although a bit on the windy side, gusts up to 20, 25 miles an hour. For the weekend, I've got more rain. Rain developing Saturday, count on showers at times on Sunday, daytime highs only in the mid 50s. I'll run the future tracker computer model for you coming up in a few minutes. I'll show you when the next round of rain arrives. Sounds good, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, the Idaho Army National Guard rescued five people trapped inside their home near Grangeville, Idaho. The agency says they've trained multiple times with the Boise Fire Department to prepare for these situations. Just north of there in Nez Perce County, the Sheriff's Office is warning people of the potential for flooding in that area. 
In the nearby town of States, Idaho, people say they're pray praying that the rain slows down now. That area was hit hard with flooding following heavy rain last night. Roads are closed due to high water and even a mudslide. Cram 2's Taylor Vido has been tracking the latest in that area. He joins us live now with more. Taylor? Well, guys, this appears to be a record amount of flooding for the Stites area so far. Authorities say there's no catastrophic damage, but evacuations, as you mentioned, are happening. It's like a lake running across the road. Something people living in Stites haven't seen in years. The Clearwater River rose to record highs in Idaho County, leading to scenes like this. Mel Monroe lives on Main Street in Stites. The alleyway behind my row of houses, uh, it's like a river, a rapid river. I mean, there's rapids going down through there. Stites isn't the only community affected. Highways near Kamii and Kusi have been closed too, hampering response efforts. This is a mudslide on Highway 12. Authorities in Idaho County say road crews and emergency responders have been slammed, and the situation is constantly changing. Pretty um, overwhelming. It's getting higher and coming over the road this way. Selena Byington lives outside of Stites. Several roads around her are closed. It's pretty, knocks you back quite a bit. You know, I think that you have to take reevaluation of you know, what's important. Some people have been evacuated from their homes due to high water. Monroe estimates about 10 to 20 homes in Stites are affected. The Idaho County Sheriff's Office says they haven't received any reports of injuries or major damage. The situation is still very serious. The Air National Guard was helping evacuate a family near Luke's Gulch Road. They say the situation is constantly changing and the extent of the flooding and its impacts to Stites continue to unfold. Tell everybody to pray that it slows down. The Idaho County Sheriff's Office adds that their dispatchers are just slammed with calls. Everyone is really busy, so they ask that people don't in people in that area don't inundate their dispatch center with repeat flooding calls. In the newsroom, Taylor Vido, Graham 2 News. Taylor, thank you very much. New video now showing the moment a power pole came crashing right through a car south of Seattle on Friday. Wow. Police released this traffic cam video showing the pole smashing right into an SUV. Miraculously, the couple inside, they're just recovering from minor injuries and the pole came right through. They had to sit in their vehicle and wait to be rescued as crews made sure the power lines were not active. Now, a second angle from the video also shows this bicyclist going across an uh, intersection and just sections seconds after he crosses. Yep. That's what happened. Power oh, pole goodness. comes crashing down there In all 26 different poles fell. The power company is investigating what caused the poles to come down. They say they were inspected back in 2016. There were no red flags then. The National Weather Service also says the wind was not strong enough at the time to blame. The power company now going to hire a third party investigator. My goodness. Well, the deadline is fast approaching in October of next year. The Real ID Act takes effect and it will impact travelers in Washington and Idaho. It means if your state does not require that you show proof of citizenship to get your license, the TSA may no longer accept your ID in order to board a flight. We'll tell you what that means for people in Washington and Idaho coming up new at six tonight. The city of Spokane's plans for a central transit line connecting Spokane Community College to Brown's addition just got a big boost. Today, Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers and Senators Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell announced a $53 million grant to help fund the project and 10 new electric buses. Now, this route will pass through downtown and the university district. Construction is set to begin next year, and the line will open the year after that if all goes well. Mm. A Spokane County Fire District has added to their fleet. They have just purchased their first aerial ladder fire truck. It's a $50,000 investment the crew says was too good of a deal to pass up. As Creme 2's Shana Walltower tells us, it's a tool to keep up with the growing city. Yeah, it's the newest addition to the fire pit, and it's 102 feet of rescue potential. It's a beauty. Three weeks ago, Spokane County District 4 introduced the newest member of its fire response family. This aerial ladder truck brings a whole new level of rescue capability to Deer Park just an all around better fit for what we were looking for. After six months of searching, crews were finally driving this truck into the station. 
They bought it used from the Yakima Fire Department. Fire Chief Randy Johnson says new trucks like this are listed for nearly $1 million. They got this one for just $50,000. Really? So picked up the phone and called the chief, who was another friend of mine from Yakima, and said, so I hear you have a ladder for sale, and about two weeks later, we made a deal. He says they got it to keep up with city development standards and the growing city of Deer Park. As commercial development happens, as larger structures uh, come into uh, the district, we needed to have that capacity. New manufacturing buildings and a new Avista Utilities building have popped up recently. All areas that could be problem spots in the case of a fire. That would require a larger uh, fire flow, gallons per minute. That's the type of, of structures that we would use this on. Johnson says they'll also be able to help neighboring districts with structure fires and rescue. Now right now they have to finish training their crew on it. Johnson says most of these firefighters haven't ever used this type of truck before. They hope to have it out and in full rotation by October. In Deer Park, Shana Waltower, Crem 2 News.